take, for example, Peter Schiff. He is someone who I like and who has been right about a lot of unrelated things, but he is extremely wrong about the connection between Federal Reserve quantitative easing, inflation, and gold. Every single wrong assumption that I described in part one, that QE causes inflation, that the way to hedge against inflation is gold, if inflation even were to occur, and that the United States is the only country in the world, and what the Federal Reserve does somehow affects the price of something that's priced worldwide, even though the other three quarters of money printing done in the world are done by countries other than the United States, he is on TV every day screeching about this, even though he has consistently been wrong. And what his investment returns are, are anyone's guess. But I have anecdotally heard that they are not very good. He advocates gold, but he has not advocated investing in the stock market over the last 10 years, as far as I could tell, even though that was the greatest bull market of all time. And we just saw the 10 year return in part one of the stock market against gold. So I completely debunk Peter Schiff's claims in this video up here. Next, we go to Robert Kiyosaki, and his are even weirder because he's not an asset manager. He's someone who writes books that have stories to educate people about finance. He actually takes a theological view. He says that gold and silver are God's money and you should invest in it because it's God's money. He never once talks about returns, but then he also advocates Bitcoins and he gloats about how good the returns are in Bitcoin. So. When he is in something that went up, he gloats about it, but then he keeps saying he invests in gold and silver, and he claims to have been doing this since the early 1960s when he was young, and therefore his returns must have been terrible because he has endured all those decades and decades of poor returns of gold and silver that I showed you in the charts in part one, but yet he says it's God's money, it's God's money, and I dismantle his claim about how gold and silver is an appropriate investment strategy in this video over here, and it's truly comical actually what he says. Next, we go to Danielle DiMartino Booth, who is someone who you may not have heard of before. She's very similar to Peter Schiff in a way, but she still says that, oh, you know, the interest rates have to normalize, normalize, meaning that a Fed funds rate of 3% is normal, which is completely wrong. That's like saying that heavier than air flying machines not being possible is normal. I mean, she would be the descendant of people who were in the establishment in 1901 and said that heavier than air flying machines are not possible. So she says she's bold gold, she's bold gold. She has been in gold for a long time and is extremely frustrated as to why it's not going up. But the fact that she was on a Federal Reserve Advisory Committee is worrisome in that while her opinion is not different from anyone else on the Federal Reserve, they all think the same thing over there. She still uses words like normalize interest rates. There is an assumption that a 3% Fed funds rate is normal and nothing could be further from the truth. Quantitative easing, being permanent and rising exponentially is what is normal. And that's an extremely good thing once you understand the first principles of technology and economics, because we are only 10, 12, 15 years away from an era of tremendous abundance and prosperity relative to today, just because of this accelerating rate of change. And it would continue to improve from there. Another inflation monger, Nouriel Roubini, he isn't fanatical about gold per se, because he's an economist and more of an academic, not an asset manager or someone like that. But he's still saying that persistent inflation will happen this time. He's been saying that for 12 years. He's been wrong, just like all other PhD economists. He isn't worse than other economists. It's just that they all think that and their careers advance by propagating the same garbage to each other, no matter how wrong it is. So I debunk him in this video up here, which you should watch. Now, I also highlight the people who are correct about gold. And lo and behold, the self-made billionaire, someone who was not all that rich, but became a self-made billionaire, unlike any of the other people that I featured, is correct about gold being a terrible investment thesis. And his language is a lot harsher than mine is too. He's actually very confrontational and mocking of gold as an investment thesis. And he is correct insofar as it being a weak investment thesis. He doesn't explain it from a technological and a technonomic point of view like I do, but he probably does understand those concepts based on other things I've seen him say. And he is a technology entrepreneur and that's how he made his money. So I have a video featuring his opinion about gold in this card up here. So that is effectively the directory of videos you should look at to understand more about why gold is a terrible investment thesis because A, quantitative easing does not cause aberrantly high inflation unless it were to be above a level that we have never ever been at before and are not in danger of breaching. B, if there were inflation, gold is not really the way to hedge against it. And C, all this presumes that the United States is the only country in the world because they say the US central bank printing money 
causes a worldwide price commodity to go up. Japan has printed four times as much money as the United States in relation to the size of its own economy, yet Japan still does not have inflation. And my atom thesis explains exactly why that is, because inflation is borderless and quantitative easing is borderless as well, because technology is borderless. But other people have no alternate explanation for that, and therefore they don't know what's going on. Simply repeating something they've memorized from 1950s era textbooks, which is what Peter Schiff, Robert Kiyosaki, and Daniel DiMartino Booth do, is just extremely out of date and they're not held to account enough because they have advocated that people put their money in an asset that has clearly not been going up as per the charts you saw in part one of this two-part video series. So I hope that this was informative and this was my six month update about how gold is a terrible investment thesis and why people who advocate gold never actually talk about their returns. They never actually talk about the return. And the worst of all among these was Robert Kiyosaki because when something he was in actually did go up, which was Bitcoin, then he's immediately very excited to talk about the return. Now, I don't advocate Bitcoin either, but that's a different topic for different videos. At least Bitcoin has gone up for whatever reason you wish to attribute to that. Gold clearly does not go up. It is a hugely inferior investment thesis relative to just the ordinary stock market, meaning the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones Industrial Average. But anyway, I hope you found this two-part video to be informative and interesting. And if you like this type of content, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much for watching.